Welcome back, everyone. Okay, so if you've been lucky enough to be working at home during this pandemic, here's a question for you. How's your back doing? Chances are probably pretty good that it's been unhappy at one point or another. And so here's the deal. We need to strengthen and then also prevent any kind of back injuries. And we're going to do that today with the one and only Nadia Kordic. You're going to show us, Nadia, how to strengthen our core to help our back. Welcome. We need you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me, guys. We're so excited, Nadia. Now, can you start off by telling us why having a strong core matters to help with our back? Okay, so during the early days of the COVID-19 crisis, a lot of us quickly adapted our workspaces and we did things like make makeshift work work uh, desks and that sort of wreaked havoc on our back and our our neck as well and along with sitting a little bit too much so having a strong core can help restore um, mobility in the spine and balance as well so it's really important to get into some core strengthening exercises because the core and the back are opposing muscle groups so without a strong core you can't have a strong back of course well let's get started yeah. we're going to start with something called a tabletop knee raise into cat and cow meow let's do yeah. it yeah yeah, <laughs> it sounds like a mouthful, but it's pretty easy. Yeah. So we're going to come into uh, all fours, which is otherwise known as the quadruped position. So we're going to tuck our back toes under just like so, and you're going to lift your knees about an inch off the ground or so. You're going to hold that for about 10 seconds. And once you reach that 10, you're going to put your knees back down on the ground. You're going to round out your back and sort of stretch it out. And then you're going to arch your back right after. And you're going to keep repeating oh. that, hold your knees up for about 10 seconds, right? So here we're getting really the core strengthening part of this move. And as yeah. soon as you drop your knees, we stretch out our back, really elongate it, really elongate the spine. And then we arch our back to further stretch it out some more. And you'll just keep repeating that for about, maybe we'll do about 20 of those. That's perfect. Let's move on to our next exercise, which is called the low plank hip raise. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna put our hands down on the ground, flat on the ground, you're gonna extend one leg back, so your right leg back, and then your left leg follows just like that. Squeeze your inner thigh muscles together, and you're gonna raise your hips up about three inches or so, and just hold it for a couple seconds, and then release it back down to a neutral spine, and then hold that plank. And you're gonna repeat oh, that yeah. again. Raise your hips up nice and high, and then release it down into a plank, oh. and then hold it. Yeah, right? It feels good. So there is a bit of a stretch right here when you raise your hips up and then you come back down to that neutral spine. This is where you're really strengthening your core in this positioning right here. Now, Nadia, I'm feeling Ooh. a lot going on here. Uh, what yes. kind of muscles would I be working on? <laughs> so the great thing about this exercise, also like the first exercise, is a multi-joint. So you'll definitely feel your quads working, absolutely your core. And then you'll feel a nice stretch in your back and you should feel your shoulders as well. Yeah. I feel this a lot in my Ooh. shoulder blades. <laughs> you absolutely will feel in your shoulder blades. Yeah. Ooh, okay. Yeah, that's hot. That's hot. Oh, it's me now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <hold on. laughs> okay, your next move is something now that you call the press up. What is that and how does that the work? The press up. Okay, so with the press up, you're going to lie right down on your stomach, just like this. Okay. Thumbs right above your breastbone, and you're going to push straight up back into that plank positioning. You're gonna hold for probably about two or three seconds and really think about retracting your shoulder blades towards your spine. And then you're gonna come back down and hold. Really important, oh, squeeze yeah. your shoulder blades together as you push up and hold. Yeah, hold for a couple beats and then release it all the way down and really squeeze your shoulder blades together. And as you come up, yeah. you do the same thing. You hold and really think about opening up the upper part of your back oh and right oh, down yeah. here you squeeze you really start to feel your lower back loosening up oh. how is this press up different than a push-up that's a great question so the difference is is that you lie flat on the ground just like so and you're taking a bit of a rest here and just allowing your back to sort of loosen up yeah. and then you come up and that's the harder movement you hold at the top and then here it's a full rest usually a push-up we don't get any rest, any rest, right? Yeah, I was gonna say, I feel super strong. <laughs> I can do like 10 <laughs> in a row. Of push -ups. <laughs> <laughs> now it is time for some glute bridges, which some people, myself yeah. included, like to refer to as pelvic thrusts. So uh, yeah. walk us through that, please. <laughs> Lovingly, 
Lovingly. <laughs> Loving. <laughs> okay, so for this one, we're gonna lie down on our backs, just like so. Okay. And we're going to squeeze down, squeeze into your, into your, into your upper back, and you're gonna raise your hips up nice and high, just like this. So the thing about this, and then you're gonna come back down like this, and you're gonna keep pushing up and down. So the thing about these glute raises is that often with what's contributed to our um, neck pain and our predominantly our lower back pain is our hip flexors tend to get really, really tight when we sit too much. So this is yes. a great exercise to, to really open oh. up and lengthen our hip flexors. So wait, am I flexing my butt? That's a great question. When you come to the top, you really squeeze your glutes together. And this is where you'll feel the lengthening of your hip flexors, right? Yeah. So you really want to lengthen them. Absolutely. And then you come on down and this is sort of your rest positioning where you can open up that upper part of your back. And then here is where we get the strength and strength positioning and really squeeze your glutes. And you should feel your, your um, quads as yeah. well as your hamstrings, a little bit of your shoulders and a little bit of your triceps as well. And come on down. Oh, Ooh, that's good. good. That's great. Yeah. Really important as well is that you want to make sure that you don't hyperextend your back too much when you come up to the top. So you don't want to have mm -hmm. that sort of really, really arched back. You want to kind of keep more of a neutral spine and then okay. come on down. So we're going to stay on our backs because yes. we've got another move that is, um, you can give us the name of it as well, but it is another way to sort of engage our core from this position. What's, what's the name of that, Nadia? Okay, so this is called the abdominal draw-ins. So you want to make sure that you put your hands underneath your tailbone to protect your lower back. Right? <laughs> so okay. your, your hands are acting like a cushion. So you're going to okay. squeeze your knees together and engage your inner thigh muscles. And you're going to come on in with your legs, right? And sort of round out your back. This is where your stretch for your back mm -hmm. comes in. And then here's the strengthening positioning where you extend your legs around in front oh, of I you see. about an inch okay. off the ground. And this is where you get the core strengthening. You should really feel your core working oh, right here. Yeah. Really important that you don't want to keep your legs too high because that disengages the core a little bit. So keep them about an inch off the ground and then come on in, stretch out your back and then extend your legs straight out in front of you and hold oh, yeah. for a couple seconds. And you're gonna keep repeating that. That is that. great. Yeah, that really is great. you'll feel your core working. Yeah, you'll feel your your, quad, your quads as well too in this one. Yeah. Uh, Nadia, we've got time for one more exercise. And I don't know about yep. you, but the twisting motion of my torso yeah. that I have lost over time and certainly over this pandemic. Absolutely. So one of the great things to help with that is this exercise, it's actually one of my favorite. So if you don't have a weight at home, we're gonna use, here we're gonna use about a five pound weight, so it's so, uh, not too much of a heavy weight. You can also use a can, whether it's a can of soup, whatever you've got at home, mm -hmm. but can works the best. You're gonna hang on to it, extend your arms out in front of you, and then you're gonna twist over to the left and just hold for a couple seconds, and then come back to the center, hold again, and then turn and twist to the opposite side. So oh, wow, the that great feels thing great. about this is that, right, it does. So when you get that yeah. twist, you really feel your back opening up and you sort of release mm -hmm. your, your back, upper, lower, mid back, come to center. You should feel your shoulders a little bit more in here. So this is the strengthening part of the move. Yeah. And, and of course, I am not flexible. Absolutely... Is this hard just for me? <laughs> oh. No, it, it is. Not it's hard for me, it Mel. <laughs> <laughs> it, is a diff it is a difficult <laughs> exercise. And you can absolutely do this exercise standing up. So you can do it seated, you oh can do my. it standing up, and you can do it on your knees as well. It's most commonly Crossing done my legs up. and twisting my torso are two things that clearly I need to work on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh, so now we've done all of these. How many times should we be doing all of these for our core weekly, Nadia? I would say three times a week if you can. Five is amazing, but if you can realistically, if you can do um, these exercises three times a week, that would be great. And let's say, Nadia, we're, we're running short on time and we only have a chance to do three exercises. What do you think are the three most thorough exercises, if you will? Okay, so I would say the, the first exercise we did with the tabletop and the cat and cow with your knees yeah. raising off the ground and holding for about 10 seconds. I would say those plank hip raises as well as the one we just did just now with the trunk oh. rotations. Yeah, that's a great Standing sequence right seated. there. That's good. Nadia, thank you so much for bringing these exercises to us. I already feel better. Awesome. You're more than welcome. And everyone else, we're going to have all of these exercises up on our website right after the show. And stay tuned because we'll be right back.